What's up, world? It's your boy, Jerron Eichner, back again with another video for Starstruck TV. This time we're talking about WandaVision series finale and the season as a whole. Before I start, do apologize for all my fans out there. I have not been doing review videos lately, mostly because I've been knee-deep finishing up my film, The Bond. If you want to know more about The Bond and see uh, the trailer, go follow my personal page, Jerron Eichner. There'll be a link in the caption section below. See the trailer, check out some other videos that are more film oriented, et cetera, so forth. But that's why I haven't been on Star Trek TV doing review videos. I've been just really busy. So sorry about that, but we are back. I just finished watching WandaVision. And man, 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 there's a lot to process here. There's a lot to process. I got coffee to help me process all this. Let's start with how it ended before we get into the other juicy stuff. Uh, we see that um, the the WandaVision family, they band together. They managed to defeat Agatha with um, Scarlet Witch finally realizing her true form, becomes Scarlet Witch. She throws runes up onto the hex. Pat, pat. Captures Agatha, tells her that she's going to be remaining in her Agnes state, which is weird, and I'm going to address that later. And then she decides to remove the hex, thus killing or removing her children and vision. And then she decides to embark off into the world. After credit scene, we show her reading the Darkhold book and her doing some Doctor, Doctor Strange shit. And seemingly using the Dark Hole book to look at multiverses. At least that's what I got from that. <clears throat> that ending, to many people, is seemingly disappointing. And I think a lot of this has to do... This is the magic of television. And this is why it's interesting that um, the show even exists. Because a phenomenon typically happens in TV. TV shows. Especially with like popular shows like... Game of Thrones, Lost, Heroes. When you have these weekly episodic um, episodes, yeah, um, the fans begin to form their own theories. And oftentimes, the fan theories tend to be way, way better than what the, the studios had planned for the show. And those fan theories will get way out of control and basically take over the energy. It's happened time and time again with Game of Thrones. It's happened with uh, Heroes. It's happened with WandaVision. And basically the rumor mill was is that we were going to see an appearance from Doctor Strange in this episode. Now, now, that did not happen. We did not see Doctor Strange in this episode. However, however, Doctor Strange was definitely mentioned in this episode. If you pay close attention to the dialogue, Agatha, when she's confronting Scarlet Witch... She's like, oh, you discard witch. You are one of the most powerful beings out there. You are more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. Now, MCU heads and Marvel heads, if you know your Marvelness, you know that the current Sorcerer Supreme is Doctor Strange. That's your Doctor Strange intro right there. There, there it is. Especially with the after credit scene, you see Wanda basically hopping through multiverses in theory, which is my theory of what she was doing there. Using the, the Dark Hole book, Doctor Strange is going to have to pull up now because this chick is way more powerful than him. If you remember the job of the Sorcerer Supreme, the Sorcerer Supreme is supposed to be protecting the Earth from forces of nature that are stronger than, that can threaten Earth. So, naturally, Doctor Strange is going to have to pull up now because WandaVision happened, the events went down, things went well. So... That was the teaser for Doctor Strange. We got that. That was the that was all we kind of really needed to sprinkle those seeds to prepare for the next movie. And because and, and a lot of this has to do with the studio aspect of it too, because Doctor Strange was actually supposed to come out next as the first Marvel film, but they pushed that back. And now we're getting Spider Man next, which is super fascinating. I might have to make another video about that. But the point is is that by them moving Doctor Strange back in the, in the timeline, in the, in the studio timeline, they had to re reconfigure some things, is basically what I'm, how I'm seeing that. But I digress. There's a lot to break down in this episode, so I'm trying to keep this short and sweet for y'all. But the next thing I want to talk about 
is Photon um, slash Spectrum. I actually don't think we have a confirmed name for her in this show. Uh, we get to see a little bit of her powers. Uh, the scene where when Haywood pulls up into the hex, they fire a gun at the kids. She steps in and she actually absorbs the bullets. The bullets hit her. Her powers activate. She absorbs the bullets and they just disappear, I guess, is what happens there. So now we have a clear idea what her power set is. Um, energy absorption, energy manipulation. That's kind of how I see what she does. She Mostly, it seems that she absorbs energy. Because she absorbed Wanda's blast in the previous episode. Now she's absorbing this bullet, and she seems to just kind of like take it. Her, We also get an after credit scene with her, which I think is leading up to Captain Marvel 2, and in turn, the secret invasion. We see, I don't know exactly who that chick was, but I'm sure someone will enlighten me. Um, we see a chick pull up on on Monica after the events of WandaVision. She reveals herself to be a scroll. She's like, I'm a scroll. We got people that want you, that need you right now. And they're up in space. Pull up. Monica's like, I bet. So now we kind of have the basis set for Captain Marvel 2, which is going to probably be Monica and the scrolls doing stuff in space. Captain Marvel is going to pop up. There's going to be a conflict there because they got beef. Interesting enough. I'm not mad at that. Cool. So, now, we're going to actually talk about the next aspect. I'm going to save the, the juicy part for last, because there's some juicy stuff that I want to talk about at the end here. But we're getting through all the, good, the other stuff. The next part I want to talk about is vision. Now, I actually predicted this on my Facebook page, that this was what was going to happen. when they, As soon as I saw white vision, which is basically like a shell physical form of vision, I knew that at some point white vision and real vision were going to merge in some kind of way, shape, or form, which would allow white vision to basically become the new vision, yada, yada, yada. So now we got vision back. However, really disappointing at how they did this. And I'm really kind of sad about this because the scene was great. Don't get me wrong. And this is probably the, the hype that Paul Bettany was actually trying to hype up that had the internet in shambles because he was saying that um, he couldn't, He's excited to work with an actor that he's never worked with before. And it turns out that he was talking about himself. Wild. Crazy scene. White vision versus regular vision. Conversation breaks down where he's like, what, what do you mean? Like, I need, to, I need you to break down what you're telling me here. So the vision unlocks his memories, gives all his memories to white vision. White vision is like, bet, that's wild. And then he flies off. And then we don't see him again for the rest of the episode. And it's crazy to me how they did that. Like, there's just a lot of questions with that and why, why Feige and Marvel decided to just go ahead and let him just fly off into the wilderness and you don't see him again at all whatsoever. I imagine that, I was hoping that he was going to pull up in the final battle, but it is what it is. But, predictions, now that we know that Vision has returned, we will probably see White Vision as some type of vigilante that's kind of running around doing Avenger stuff. And at some point in time, he's going to probably pop back up later on in the, in the in phase four don't know when don't know how honestly i don't really have any sound theories on how that's going to work out if you guys have some please let me know in the comments because the white vision thing i i predicted that was going to happen but i don't know where they're going to go with this at this point now that white vision is out there doing his thing obviously he's going to probably run into wanda at some point we imagine but i think that he's going to probably end up being like a kind of a vigilante kind of dude on like i'm going to go save the day type stuff but keep in mind that we're getting to the mythos the Avengers at this point don't really exist anymore. Captain America's old as hell. Iron Man is dead. Thor is out in the galaxy, the Gardens of the Galaxy. Hulk is in Baby Hulk mold, or not Baby Hulk, but um, Smart Hulk mold with his arm all messed up, so he's out. Hawkeye is retired. We don't know. Black Widow's dead. Um, the only person that's really out and active at this point would be Doctor Strange. Um... Yeah, so it makes sense that if there's still stuff going on in the world... Oh, also, the people of Wakanda, too, also is still around. So um, the Wakanda team, not necessarily Black Panther, but he's still around. We don't know what's going to happen with Black Panther, too, but we know that he's still around. So he's still around, too, but he's probably dealing with Wakanda-based things, more than likely. Um, so at this point, technically speaking, White Vision is basically the only dude... 
in the entire planet that we know of at this exact point that is capable of going out there and, and doing Avenger stuff. So that's probably what he's going to go do. Cool. Not mad at that. Oh, man, there's a lot going on in this episode. But now I want to talk about probably my biggest issue with the show, or at least this particular episode, and what Faggy tried to do. And we're going to talk about Quicksilver, my dude. I'm going to try and keep this short and concise, kind of like making long-ass videos. But, but we got to talk about this, bruh. We got to talk about this. So, <clears throat> in the episode, we see that... Um, Theatros, what they're calling him in the show, is holding Monica captive. Monica tries to escape. Uh, Theatro actually displays abilities during this scene, including his hyperspeed. And then he does something where he pokes Monica in the chest and she flies across the room. So he has powers. Okay. That, that is clear that this dude has powers. Monica sits down. She sits down and looks at all the stuff on the table, is going through the papers and sees that this dude's name is Ralph Boner. She's like, your name is Ralph Boner. He laughs, ha <laughs> ha, Boner, Boner joke. That's it. That's all we get. <laughs> and like, it's really probably one of the biggest, it's actually probably the biggest troll that Feige has ever done. But I obviously can't say that yet because we don't, we just weren't given enough information there. Because just because his name is Ralph Boner in this world doesn't mean that he's not Quicksilver, that he does not have Quicksilver abilities. It also doesn't mean that he's not from the Fox dimension. We don't know because none of these questions were answered or, or, or even addressed after the fact that the hex was closed. What they should have did is gave us like three more minutes of this film, of this episode where after the hex closes, we see what happened to, to Ralph. Does Ralph turn into regular ass Ralph? Or is he like regular ass Ralph with powers? Were the powers given to him by Agatha? A lot of questions. And if Agatha can give people powers, why didn't she do that earlier when she was fighting Scarlet Witch? This is easily the biggest misstep of the entire series because we definitely, and when I say we, I mean the fans that were expecting, expecting something, definitely are not satisfied with how the story of Quicksilver has been resolved in this particular uh incantation of WandaVision. With that said, they just announced last night that they are doing a movie called The Mutants. No details have really been released other than the fact that the rumor has it that it's going to focus on Quicksilver and WandaVision. Or sorry, Scarlet Witch. And maybe Magneto. That's the rumors that are going around. Now, when I heard this news that The Mutants was being announced, this was announced before the episode aired, I immediately thought that what was going to happen was that Quicksilver, after Wanda broke the hex or however it was going to end, Quicksilver would then be transported back to his dimension or he would have to fight to get back to his dimension, which would be what the mutants was about or something to that effect. Obviously, none of that happened, which brings me to like my overall point of this entire episode and the entire thing of WandaVision is that people that... that people don't seem to remember about this at the and this is a studio thing this is not a story thing this is not a comics thing at the end of the day at the very end of the day this is still a disney plus show which means that all of the far out theories of, of reed richards and wolverine jumping through a portal and mephisto and all these things they're too heavy-handed for the casual viewer. It's just that simple. And this is something that I probably realized around, like right when they introduced the kids during the Halloween episode, I was like, this is not gonna go as deep as we need it to go. Because you have to think about who your audience is. This is a Disney Plus Channel show, right? And Disney is for the family. You got to see, you got the little shot at, the, at this episode when the family is all familyed up in the vendor style. That's for the kids, dog. That's for the kids. And you, as Marvel Studios, you have to walk the fine line between picking, cherry picking from the comics and then also um, not making it too complex for your for your fans. Which is why we didn't get Doctor Strange because that's not that's not the, the, the energy for that. 
if you if they had Doctor Strange pop up at the end of this episode on some do sex machina type energy, it would have felt cheap and it would have felt not genuine to the mythos of what a typical Disney show is. Which at the end of the day, while WandaVision was trying to make fun of the typical sitcom format and et cetera and so forth, this show still followed the typical sitcom format. And we still had the, the typical story arc that exists in most sitcoms. And we know that there's more to come. We know that there's Doctor Strange, there's Spider-Man, there's Black Widow, there's uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there's Loki. There's all this stuff that we know that's coming. And this is Feige's first real go at a TV show. And overall, I am 100% pleased. Like, this was he, he nailed it. He absolutely nailed it. I give this show a 9.5 out of 10. The only reason I don't give it a perfect 10 is because of the dangling um, string left with Quicksilver, uh, which I almost feel like is going to be solved pretty quickly here. Like I said, with the Mutants announcement, I do think that, that we're, we're going to get some type of solace there, but it feels a little like a misstep on their part. It also feels like they just didn't have enough time in this episode to wrap up a little bit of the small details that they presented to us because... I was actually cool with Fiatro being Ralph, but they still need to explain why he has his powers, which I think is the biggest question that I have at this point is why is, if this dude is just some random dude named Ralph Boner chilling in Westview, why does he have Quicksilver abilities? If the Quicksilver abilities were given to, given to him by Agatha, how did she do that? A lot to break down. And with that said, I don't want this episode to go too long because... I can sit here and talk about this show forever and ever and ever. But in the grand scheme of things, WandaVision is probably the most interesting and compelling TV show that I've seen in a superhero sense. I should I should definitely put an asterisk on that in recent years. It's not as deep as people wanted it to be. Um, I think people were expecting so much from the show. House of M, No More Mutants, X-Men pop-up cameos. And a lot of that had to do with how Feige and the Marvel team decided to roam with spoilers. Because the interesting, the interesting thing about spoilers is that there were spoilers leaking for every episode. And I actually think that Marvel was putting those spoilers out on their own um, to keep fans interested because this is an episodic type of show and people want to put their own stuff out for the week. They have to kind of do some control on that. And by releasing spoilers, you kind of, you you put tunnel vision on your viewers. They didn't release any spoilers for this last episode. For obvious reasons, they didn't need to. The hype was there. But Marvel as a whole, I still trust them. And that's what it really comes down to is that Feige is a smart dude, man. He has done some crazy stuff with the MCU. And even though this Quicksilver thing, Peter Evans situation has not been quite resolved... He has nailed absolutely everything else so far with WandaVision. And I am absolutely pleased with this. And like I said, with the with the Quicksilver thing, I do think we will get resolution. I do think that the Mutants show that or TV show or film that was just announced last night is going to be based on Quicksilver. If I'm wrong, come back to this video and tell me. But that's going to be my theory on that. Who is Ralph Boner? We don't fucking know, bro. Didn't mean to cuss at the end. Hope I don't get flagged for that. But I love y'all. Thanks for watching. It's your boy. Once again, go check out my personals page, uh, Jerron Eichner. Um, I'll put a link in the caption. Go follow Go follow me. I talk about film and other stuff there, too. And my trailer for my new movie, The Bond, is coming out. So, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the, in the uh, comment section. Was this season whack? Should you do another one? What's your theories for multi, the multiverse of madness? What's your theories for Spider-Man? I want it all, son! Give it to me. Peace out. Later.